everyone. I'm Linda Pearson, and we are here for Echalagas workshop this week for our podcast. Not workshop, podcast. And uh, our guest this week is Charlie Mo. He, he may look familiar to you because he was here, what, two weeks ago? <clears throat> and uh, we had a cancellation at the last minute, so I wanted to bring him back because I think you have some updates for us. Potentially. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> well, before you get started, we got to give him a background. So we're gonna, he's going to talk to us today about the CTA law, which if you have an LLC or a corporation, you should pay attention. This is important stuff. Uh, it's a new federal law that we have to register our companies with the federal government. And before we get started, though, I wanted to thank our sponsor, Women Unlimited. They are a networking group here in San Antonio, but it's actually Women Unlimited International now. And any woman can join it online as a Facebook group, Women Unlimited SA, for the time being. And then we have great networking events. Uh, they have great networking events. Uh, a networking group unlike any other that we've ever seen. So check them out on Facebook. They're also at womenunlimitedsa.com. So with that, so Charlie, I'm going to turn it over to you. And you're going to tell us about this new law and who it affects and what do we do and all that good stuff. Absolutely. So okay. first of all, uh, I should actually start out. Uh, my name is Charlie Moak. I work for the University of Texas here in San Antonio. I work under the Valdez Institute for Economic Development and work for one of the groups under the IED, which is the Minority Business Development Agency, which represents minority businesses. And we also work with socially and economically disadvantaged businesses. So we're here to help in any way we possibly can. Whether you're looking for funding, you're looking for contracts, you're looking for you just contacts out there and you're looking for contracting, we are here to assist you in any way. Uh, under the IED, there are 12 different agencies that are represented from SBDC uh, all the way through a, a group that can help you trademark uh, under, under the UTSA umbrella. So we're here to help in any way we possibly can. So one of the things that was actually brought up in yesterday's national meeting under the Minority Business Development Agency's national meeting was uh, the, the CTA or the, the Corporate Transparency Act, which is a new law that's in place for any LLC that has less than 20 employees and makes less than $5 million a year. That would be a lot of them. A lot of companies have no idea what this is. So this is actually filing with the Department of Treasury. And so what the Department of Treasury is trying to do is they're trying to reduce the number of companies that are out there that are false companies or fake companies that are laundering money and, and creating better uh, efficiencies for illegal uh, monies in the United States so it's a way for you to actually register your company with the with the US government you do it once and once only the only time that you would have to refile is if <clears throat> your ownership changes excuse me if your ownership changes <clears throat> through either a buyout or somebody buys into your company or somebody <clears throat> passes away they ask that you make the changes <clears throat> on the site and that's when you would have to refile with them. So, excuse me, I'm sorry. So any kind of change. So if I have a multi-member LLC and I decide, you know what, I want this to be a single member, I would have you to. You would have to make the change with the federal Secretary government. Secretary of State. And, and yes, government. with both. And, and you're doing it with both entities um, for the same reason. The state right. wants to know that what you are established <coughs> presently. Right. And so the federal government wants to know the same. So it's just, you know, yeah, okay. So if you would notify the Secretary of State for your LLC, whichever state you're in, then you have to notify the federal government. Absolutely. This, this pod, even though we're in San Antonio, Texas, and uh, Southside First is, is, I'm the interim CEO for that. Sorry, I forgot to say, say that part. But anyway, we, we, uh, we're in San Antonio, but technically this is going to apply for anybody in the United States going forward. I don't think the law is going to probably go away. So. so one of the things that was brought up yesterday that everybody should be aware of is that you may be getting solicitations from companies saying, we can file for you, but they're going to charge you. So if you're wanting to spend money, go for it. Uh, but I will tell you that the representative from the uh, Department of Treasury was very clear. It's a very simple filing. You're going to need the, the legal name of everyone that is part of the LLC, uh, any trade names or DBAs that are being used by that LLC presently, um, you need to look at the birth dates for each one of these individuals who are owners are, or uh, uh, listed owners of the LLC. The address, in, in most cases, it's either uh, a home office or a home uh, of where you're doing business from. Um, and uh, driver's license, passports, or any other documents for each individual, as well as 
uh, images of documents that um, that these numbers come from. So if you're filing with your, your uh, passport, you just write the number. They're going to want to see the actual document itself. They don't want to just look at the number. <clears throat> Do we need a birth certificate and fingerprints? <laughs> no, not, not in this case. What they're doing That's is... It's pretty it's, 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 Well, and <clears throat> what they're trying to do is they're trying to get as, as accurate as they possibly can. Uh, the question came up is why can't the Secretary of State directly now, This is far transfer? more than the Secretary of State needs when Absolutely. you start an LLC. And so this is more information than even our state uh, officials at the Secretary of State's office even require you to file for, for a business. So um, they are getting very um, specific. And I will tell you that the, the official from the Treasury Department came straight out and said they're trying to crack down on illegal business and illegal transfer of money so that um, they can possibly defer or deter some of the business that's going on between the United States and uh, illegal trade. Okay. So that's, those are the reasons that these things are happening. So um, again, 20 employees uh, on a full-time basis. If it's less than that, uh, I'm sorry, if it's more than the, the, the 20 employees, you are exempt if you're, you've got more employees than 20. Um, if you're making less than $5 million a year, uh, you need to file. If you make more than you will actually not need to file. So let me make sure I heard you right. So if you have 20 full-time employees or less than that, zero, so you have one to 20 employees, and then you make $1 to $5 million, these are the companies that we're trying to keep track of. Absolutely. Which technically, that's the small business. I mean, that's, so if you have 21 employees or make $5 million and $1, or $50 million or $100 million or a billion, you, you don't, don't need you don't to, have you to don't do need that. to file under and CTA. What's the logic behind that? Supposedly, <laughs> the IRS actually de delivers the, the, the information directly to the Treasury Department with okay. anything over fifty million. Okay, so they have that. Yeah, they have so they, they to will that. be sending that information directly over. Wait, five million or less. <clears throat> five million or less, you have to file. And then the IRS notifies the government if it's fifty if million. Fifty. So. I'm sorry. <clears throat> let's go back. It is. It is five million or less, and it's five million and one or more do not have to file. Because the Treasury. Correct. Okay. okay. Correct. So they they have direct access to those <clears throat> accounts. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, what do we do, LLC owner, what's the first thing I need to do? Uh, deadlines, fines, So the forms. deadline is based on when you started your okay. corporation. Okay. So you need to actually go to the website, um, which is the Financial Crime Enforcement Network. Right. And so the information is, it's www.financen.gov forward slash B-O-I. B as in boy? B as in boy. Okay. O-I. And so it's beneficial owner information. Okay. Is what this information is being called. Okay. And so all of this information is actually just legitimizing your corporation. Your, this is all hot off the press, obviously. Yes. And then we will also put the links uh, in the description. And when this is out on YouTube, we'll have all those links for you as well. So if you didn't capture that, we'll make sure you get that. Absolutely, and under the in, under the FinCEN, which is the the website that I just gave, there's a small entity compliance guide that each company can go in and look and see is is there any other reason I'm exempt? Is there something else that would exempt me from having to file under the CTA? And so those are things that you should look at before you uh, before you file. And I would suggest <clears throat> if I'm looking at that and I think, oh, I'm exempt. I technically am supposed to do it, but I looked here. I'm exempt. I would s strongly suggest they email you. <laughs> Absolutely, or, or let's For give an email to us so we can get it to to the officials <clears throat> at the at the federal government to make sure that you are exempt. Yeah, double check that again, Charlie. And what's your email address, real quick? It's <laughs> Charles C H A R L E S dot M O K E at UTSA dot edu. Questions, concerns, reality checks, he'll be happy to help you with that. Absolutely. Okay. And so the federal government came straight out and said, yes, there are some fines involved with this. And no, they're not trying to play the got you uh, type card on companies. But they do want you to know that this is something that's very important to them. Right. And it's important to the U.S. government to make sure that we prevent uh, companies from coming into the U.S., setting up false corporations, 
and laundering money for illegal um, right. entities <clears throat> outside of the U.S. And then there's a radar. So this catches anybody who might be flying under the radar. Absolutely. $5 million is a lot of money. Yep. Okay. And do, do you know how much the fines would be for somebody who forgets to do this? And, and they, they mentioned the fines, and it's $10,000, and you could serve some jail time. And there is a daily fine for every day that you purposely do not file under the CTA. And what they're saying is that you have to actually purposely do this. You have to ignore uh, the, the process. You, you have to almost <clears throat> deliberately ignore doing this after they've informed you that you have to. And then they will come after you financially. So they will inform you Absolutely. at some point. Okay, but yes. they're not going to, you're not going to get a letter from the Department of Treasury or from the Secretary of State that says, oh, by the way, we've got a new law. This applies no. to you. So my goal in all of this, and, and, and our audience, our, our folks will be hearing about it a lot, is that we, we help small businesses. So the last thing we need is for small businesses to say, um, it's nice seeing you. I'm going to jail. <laughs> or I'm or getting fined. Find. Or I got yeah. this letter. Oh, my gosh. So... Our job is to get the information out there so that these small businesses are ahead of this and not getting in trouble. Absolutely. And so <laughs> this is important to businesses, especially if you continue to grow. And, and as you continue to grow, it, it, you need to look at the, the parameters that are out there for you. But um, I, I will tell you that this is um, it's something that has to be done. They came straight out in yesterday's presentation and told them that um, there, there are very few exemptions and um, you need to take this seriously because it is a law that was passed through Congress and they will enforce it. When are they going to start? So the deadlines are in here somewhere? The depending deadlines on... depending on when you started okay, your corporation. So it's, it's going to be different for each corporation okay. under each LLC <clears throat> uh, and you need to look at that closely because if you started your company last year you've got less time than those that have been in business longer. You've got till the end of the year to file. Uh, some of you that started your company last year have less time, okay. so you really need to look at that now. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> and so you've got and you've got all this off of the website. Absolutely. <clears throat> I'll say you got key questions. That's good. And then you've got information reporting file dates. That's good. And then you've got this pamphlet that has all the information, right? So th there is. <clears throat> they, I will tell you the good, federal government is very good about informing you as to what's out there and what you need to do. And so if you, you go, to, go to the site, you need to know to go there because they're absolutely. not, not going to send us the So again, it's www.fincen.gov forward slash BOI. And that's for your beneficial ownership information. There is uh, probably four different resources um, under that one uh, area in the website. And that gives you probably everything that you need to know in what the, the new federal reporting requirements are uh, for the CTA, uh, for the Beneficial Ownership Information Guide. And so all of these things are out there, uh, including the Small Entity <coughs> Compliance Guide. And so all of those are gonna give you kind of different um, uh, topics that you need to look at to see where you fall under. <coughs> okay, and then last, uh, two weeks ago, we talked about a workshop that UTSA is doing for free uh, you can sign up for it. It's a free Zoom session, and then it's you'll have an attorney there, I believe. Absolutely. And then so that got pushed back. Do you have a new date for that yet? It, it will be in March. It'll be okay. the second week in March. In fact, okay. uh, we're setting a date now, now with, with Todd. Uh, okay. The attorney's name is Todd Markwartz, and so he is actually a, uh, a specialist in the area for business. He's a local attorney, and um, he's giving his time to actually come in and present and answer questions. And it's really important that if you've got a question, uh, when, we just, when we actually get this site up uh, for the March uh, webinar, it'd be great to get people signed up so that they can actually attend and, and get to ask questions. And if you've got questions in advance, shoot me an email. I'll get them in front of Todd okay. so we can answer those questions up front. Okay, so that'll be happening the second week of March. And then the last week of March, uh, Charlie is going to be doing a, a live workshop with us for a Chalagas workshop at Cuba 1918. It's a restaurant, a wonderful restaurant in the Quintana neighborhood. And he will be there live. I think it's going to be like 10 to 11. So for those of you who still have more questions or you want to uh, just ask him in person, Go ahead and come to that with all your questions. Um, 
and this is a, I'm assuming this is a completely online thing. Absolutely. They have a form that you can print if, if you want to. If you want to print it, you can print it, but they, <clears throat> they do, they're, they're hoping that you do it online so it's actually an immediate <clears throat> filing okay. so they can get it out of the way. <clears throat> um, I will tell you that uh, one of the things that was mentioned by the uh, uh, Department of Treasury's official yesterday was to be careful where you file and make sure that you go to the federal site to file. You don't want to file with anybody else because this may be a fraudulent type well, situation. I, with, a, with a new thing like this, probably what's going to happen is you're going to get emails and phone calls. And there's going to be all kinds of fake websites that are going to be sprouting up saying, oh, yeah, do it here, you know, and so th that's coming. And so this is strictly the FINCEN.gov website. Correct. Backslash BOI. So if it's not that, then you're in the wrong place. I would recommend maybe printing out the form, filling it out by hand, bringing it to a workshop, saying hey did i do this right and then go and filing online that's probably the, the most careful thing you can absolutely do. And, and, and you know we, we we would hope that individuals would actually take advantage of that and make sure that they got all of their their eyes dotted and their t's crossed yes especially when you're dealing with the federal government now i will tell you that they know that people make mistakes and um I, I, yesterday he did mention that if there is an error you could go back and correct right the error um, but you also want to make sure that you inform them that there was an error, uh, an error was committed, and that you went back and cor corrected it, just so they know that so somebody else is not getting into your site and changing things for you to make them not what you have filed directly. Well, hopefully, they got a lot of security they got to build in. Yeah, so communication is key with all this. So if you go and you file it, and there is a mistake, <clears throat> and they reach out to you. I mean, I would think you filed it, so you're not going to get the $10,000 fine. They're not going to no. go to jail. I mean, this is no. the first time around for this law anyway, and so I think they're going to have a little bit of leeway. room. Good faith. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, right. and okay. I, I will tell you, the government wants to work <clears throat> with you. Um, this is kind of a, a, a way to prevent the, you know, the illegal monies in the United States. Um, it benefits all of us. Yes. Uh, and so in the long run, I, you know, the people are saying it's just one more form. It's, well, it's one more line of protection for you as a business. Well, I think, you know, things are changing. We've got, you know, the internet, we've got high tech stuff, we've got, I mean, it's just easier and easier for people to just do whatever they want. So these are kind of built in safeguards and I get it. <clears throat> you know, today, in, today of all days, uh, AT&T was down. I know. And so, <laughs> you know, we, we, start, no, we, start, we start thinking about <clears throat> what's really going on behind the scenes. And, um, <clears throat> It's becoming way too easy. Okay, but not just, I gotta say this just real quick, a little sidebar. So not just that AT&T was down, I picked up my phone and it says something about, this is not illegal, something can't recognize the network. So I always have to shut my phone down. <clears throat> I turn my phone back on, it says can't, and then I d dug into the details. Okay, I'm just saying, I don't think it was the NSA, but it was just pretty suspect. I mean, it was out of Maryland or something, which was kind of strange. And then it was the network that was down for me, so. And we just have to be, we have to be proactive yes. in every line of business that we're working in. Correct. You know, it's getting to the point where cybersecurity used to be uh, a luxury, and now it is a necessity. It, yes. it is something that every company is going to have to look at. How secure are our sites? How secure are our websites, our, our email, etc.? Um, and same thing with the federal mm -hmm. government. They want to make sure that you go directly to their site. <clears throat> that you go into the site and you fill out the forms there. You don't want to do it through a, 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 a you know another form of, of you know, uh, site, we're doing this for you. No, yes. you don't need to do that. Right. In fact, yesterday they were mentioning that if you want somebody else to do it for you, make sure that they are a legitimate company. You just don't but go why, give all this information to somebody out there that could be a fraud. But why pay somebody when no matter what city you're in, there's a small business development or a minority business development organization and so worst case call Charlie he'll refer if you're out Absolutely. of Tucson or whatever he'll send you to the right place and so there's really no reason why anybody should have to pay for this when there are no. free coaching out available. And, and we're here to help because this is just one more step to keeping your business in line and, and being compliant with the federal government not just your state government or your local municipality but now with the federal government because this is a requirement and it is a one-time thing it's a one-time thing which unless you have changes and the, those changes change. again, <clears throat> you have to make sure that you have to remember the only other time you will file is if someone has passed away, someone has changed ownership, someone has bought in or bought out of the company. Those are, are, are serious changes that need to be made 
uh, under the, the federal government so they know exactly who owns the company. Okay, so technically though, I'm just kind of sidebar, so with the Secretary of State, technically when any of those changes happen, shouldn't we be notifying the Secretary of State as well? Absolutely. Which because a lot that, of us probably don't. And that, that's, that's actually um, required because that actually shows the true state of your company. <clears throat> So if, I'll give an example, say you and I open an LLC, and three or four years later, you, fire you buy me out. <laughs> you buy me out or I buy you out. Right. We need to make those changes with the Secretary of State's office here in Texas, but we also need to make them with the, with the U.S. Treasury Department, knowing exactly who is the true owner of this company. So I remember when we talked about this two weeks ago, I'm like, well, how come you just can't get this stuff from the Secretary of State? But I mean, it's one of those things that once you follow the Secretary of State, you go on with life and that just kind of hangs out there. So I can imagine that a lot of the businesses out there are not current. Well, and, and that, that that could cause problems in the in as you go into, as you continue business, because if, if you try to sell later, it's almost like real estate. You go back and you track who owns the real estate. And if things have not been kept Yes. Up, wow. They can send checks to people that do not deserve that money. Wow. Same thing with a corporation. If if you're still listed under the corporation as an owner and somebody sues us. You want your name off of there. <laughs> you you don't want to be part of a situation where you no, can be called point. in that's a good point. Um, for a lawsuit that you no longer have to wow. do anything with that's the business. A, that's a good point. So if and you're so, leaving, it's somebody else's responsibility to update it, but you need to make sure that, you, that that's been updated. And so I think with this layer of registering with the federal government, it's more serious, and then remember you got to notify them of any changes. I think that automatically should trigger, okay, now i got to go do that, Secretary of State. Absolutely. And then like I said, it's a one-time deal unless yeah. you've got changes. <clears throat> and so those changes... Uh, are considered significant yes. um, you all of a sudden will your company to your children or you give it to your children that's a significant change once they get it or the minute you will it to them on a piece of paper the minute they transfer the ownership of the company oh, okay when it from happens okay. present owners to whoever takes over <clears throat> okay that's yes, that's actually what you need to file because that's that shows true ownership. Wow. Okay. So I mean, we, we so we've cut the podcast down to thirty minutes because that way we want to make sure it's just bite-sized nuggets that are value added. Um, so what we're going to do is we will have um, Charlie's information in the description on our YouTube side. We'll have his information, and we will have separate links to each one of these uh, items so you can just get those and print those out. Uh, to make sure that if anybody's looking at that, no matter where they are in the United States, they're at least going to the right place. Absolutely. And then we will be putting that on southsidefirst.org. We'll have a special page just for the CTA law. It'll be Charlie's page. Charlie's going to have a page on our website. Love it. <laughs> just for the CTA law. And then, uh, so our, our job is to get this word out. Absolutely. This is huge. And I think and we the, need to... Information is your friend. Yes. And I will tell you, the, the lack of information and the ability not to be able to get what you need to be able to get this job done um, is sad, but the, the federal government has done their part of it, so we need to take advantage of this as a resource and, and, and look at it. Yes, and so ignorance is not an excuse, nope. but at some point you're going to get a letter from Uncle Sam, and he's going to say, hello, now you've got X number of days to get this done, and I think when people get to that point is when they might start just doing a search on Google and then hiring somebody to do this, and I think that's when things get go off the rails. Absolutely. Be proactive and not reactive to this. Okay. This is a requirement, not, not a, a request. Okay. And our job is to make sure nobody comes back to us and says, I just got this letter. Yep. What is this? I didn't know anything about this. Right, Absolutely. So. so we're here to help in any way we possibly can, Linda. Okay. Because, um, I mean, this is going to affect businesses, especially that small business that may not have the resources they need. We're here to help in any way we possibly free. can. So yes, technically there's no excuse. Because no, you there can is get no it excuse. done for free and you can get it done right. So, okay, that workshop that we're having, the Echalagas workshop, is going to be on March 25th at... Cuba 1918. Uh, technically, it's free, but we do. If you want to donate up to twenty dollars, that's fine. You don't have to, but that certainly helps Southside helps us out. And then you're going to have the UTSA free webinar with the attorney there, which I highly recommend you get on that. And so, if you need to know when that is, just shoot Charlie an email, and then he'll get back to you. Eventually, it'll be second week of March. Is what website. we're looking at. We're looking at his calendar <clears throat> presently okay. uh, to make sure that we can get him <clears throat> in. Um, it'll be at 10.30, whatever day is selected, and um, it will be on our website also, which is the UTSA MBDA website. MBDA website, okay. And, and I'm sure Linda will put all this information yes. on 
on Southside <clears throat> First's website too, yes. so we can actually get it out Just there. Go to click on Charlie's page, and then all this is going to be there. No, <laughs> we'll have Corporate Transparency Act. I think it's a big enough deal, at least for the next year or so. We need to keep that out there in front of everybody's mind. So, and in no time, this will be over. We'll be past this, and we'll see what's next. Well, we're going to be talking about this for a while. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well. Make sure that everybody gets yes. uh, in compliance. Yes. Thank you, Charlie, for no, thank being you. with us. And then check us out at southsidefirst.org and give Charlie an email at Charles, C H A R L E S dot M O K E at UTSA dot EDU. Perfect. Thank you.